Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for reminding us through our singing ministers that when trials come, we need help. We don't know where to turn to. You have given us an open check, an open invitation. We can come to you. Lord, we pray that as we get back home, anytime we face challenges, we know there is a rock of ages. We can always come to hide in you. Lord, we pray this weapon of prayer, you give it to us. That every time, any time, we'll make use of this key and we'll be victorious in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, that in our personal lives, in our families, in our churches, we'll make prayer, scriptural prayer, to be central in our ministries in Jesus' name. And we, by your grace, enablement, encouragement, will have all the strength we need to carry through in the ministry in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are rounding up our series of studies in the epistle to the Ephesians now. We've been talking about the weapons of our warfare. And, and you have seen what the Lord has been telling us from verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, he has spent some time on the doctrines of the church from chapter 1 all through to chapter 3. And he laid a very strong foundation. Then in chapter 4, he gets into some practical, practical things of the life of the church. The same in chapter 5 and up till the ninth verse in chapter 6. Virtually, he had touched every area, every person. Father, mother, wife, husband, children, servant, workers, everybody. Now he says, finally. Which means then, there ought to be a conclusion. There's an opening, an introduction. There's a body of the message. There's a conclusion. Finally then, my brethren, and in particular now, the ministers of God, the servants of the Lord, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And he said, I cannot conclude, except I tell you how to overcome in this battle that is raging. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Paul did not leave the people in ignorance. He wanted everybody to know that we face a warfare in ministry. And that, that warfare is not for novices. It is for, it's not even just for Christians. Christians who are not called, who are not sure they are called into the ministry. Even ministers have a definite call. If they do not have the mindset, the endurance, the armor, the training, the watchfulness of a warrior, they will not be able to win the ministerial spiritual warfare in which they engage. And Paul, the apostle, if you understand this language, in the whole of the New Testament, has been talking about warfare. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, he speaks of our warfare. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, he told Timothy, war, a good warfare. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, it says that the person who wars will not be entangled with the affairs of this life. And Peter also joins it and it says, You abstain from fleshly laws which war against your soul. And then Paul, the apostle in 2 Corinthians 7, verse 5, it says, Fight is within, fears without. Now here in the epistle to the Ephesians, it says, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And then it says, against spiritual wickedness in high places. As you read about this kind of warfare and conflict and battle and everything, you'll be asking yourself, who is sufficient for these things without being closed for prayer and watchfulness? And that's why we're looking at the topic right now, the warrior's prayer and watchfulness. You cannot fight the battle of the ministry in your own power. If you try to fight the spiritual battle in your own strength, 
you'll be defeated. Every warrior must keep in constant contact with his commander-in-chief. Through the ministry of prayer. And the scriptures has a lot to say about this ministry of prayer. Because it's through that that we overcome. It begins, uh, Paul the Apostle tells us, uh, the pieces of armor. In verse 13 it says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins got about with truth, having on the best plate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, beyond all, on top of it all, very important and indispensable, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, having given us all the pieces of armor. Now he says in verse 18, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto. With all perseverance and supplication for saints. He calls us to prayer. He calls us to watchfulness. Through prayer we must be in constant contact with a great God. Who gives us power and victory. As his soldiers and servants. But then you must join with prayer, watchfulness. You remember what Jesus said, Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray. Colossians 4, verse 2, continue in prayer and watch. And then in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. You'll see then the connection between the watching and the praying. We must always watch, be on our guard, and be vigilant because there is an adversary who is seeking, whom he may devour, whom he may destroy. We're going to look at the message in three parts. Number one, the persistence of the warrior's prayer. The persistence of the warrior's prayer. Number two, Perseverance and watchfulness while praying. Perseverance and watchfulness while praying. Number three, the power of the watchman's prayer. The power of the watchman's prayer. Number one, persistence of the warrior's, the persistence of the warrior's prayer. Verse 18 once again, Ephesians chapter 6. It tells us, Pray always, not sometimes, not even many times, not merely at special times, not when we feel like, not when we are drawn to prayer, not when we receive encouragement from others to pray. Pray always with all prayer, all kinds of prayer, petition, praise, combat kind of prayer, the prayer to put the devil on the run. The prayer to claim the promises of the Lord. The prayer to, dis to defeat the enemies of the gospel. All kinds of prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. In the spirit, not in the flesh. Not with words suggested by the flesh. Suggested only by the mind. You go deep into your spirit. You go deep into your desires. And from the very depth of the desires of your spirit. Supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance, your vigilant and supplication for all saints, the perseverance of the warrior's prayer. You know that when everything has failed, prayer is what enables the warrior to defeat the foe on the battlefield. Prayer is not just an isolated weapon, it works with each and every other weapon while fighting. In the girdle of truth. While fighting with the best plate of righteousness in place. While you are fighting in combat against the enemy of the gospel. Or the shoes of the gospel of peace on. Or the shield of faith in your hand. And with the helmet of salvation protecting you. And with the sword of the spirit coming out of your mouth. You are to be in prayer. Praying without fainting. 
praying without ceasing. Continuing instant in prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Isn't that the reason why Charlotte Elliot captures the truth in this hymn? Christian, seek not yet repose. Cast thy dreams of ease away. Thou art in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. Principalities and past must in their sin array. They wait for their unguided, unguided hours. Watch and pray. Watch as if on that alone. Hence, all the issues of the day. Pray that help may be sent down. Watch and pray. And you see what the Lord is telling us. He's telling us that with our praying, we're watching. With our watching, we're praying. And the prayers, all prayer, all prayer. And you're praying without ceasing, you're continuing praying instant every time. In First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. In verse 17. It says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Obviously, it doesn't mean that we want to be praying aloud every minute of the day. Pray without ceasing. Even your meditation, let it be a form of prayer. Your thoughts, let it be a form of prayer. Your desires, let it be a form of prayer. In your action, while you are doing other things, let your heart be sending an SOS. Save our soul. Let, let, let your heart be sending an SOS unto heaven. And even when, when, you are, when you are not very conscious, let it be the pattern of your life. You are meditating on the promises of God. You are accepting the promises of God. You are making the petition. Even when your mouth is not a moving, even when you are not saying anything out, pray without ceasing. And of course, then it means before you minister, pray. While you are ministering, be in the mood, in the attitude of prayer. After you are finished your ministering, be in the attitude of prayer. Before the counseling, why don't you pray? And while you are counseling, why don't you just keep on sending messages to the Lord? Oh Lord, you have made me a counselor over these people and they break all these problems and your child and your servant is ignorant, is the least of the least and I don't know what I'm going to tell them. This person is expected to, ex uh, to get from me an answer that will turn his life around and give him victory instead of defeat. Give me the word. And then after the counseling, you pray on that counseling again, oh Lord, bless the word I've spoken in the heart and the life of this individual. Pray without ceasing. A program is coming, pray. The program is going on, pray. The program is finished and then pray. Everything and every and anything, pray. And let nothing, let nothing hinder that moment of prayer before the Lord. Pray without ceasing. In First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. And we're talking about the perseverance we ought to manifest in prayer. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Continually. Let not a day pass. Let not any event pass. And do not be so busy that you do not have the time to pray. Uh, we're told of Martin Luther that prayed for hours and hours and hours every day. Even the busiest of days. He'll pray. Find time, hours to pray. And how we ought to do that. And you cannot be as busy as Martin Luther. Because he was one of the foundation members of the, of the, of the Reformation. Uh, and they did a lot. And yet they prayed a lot. And that's the reason we ought to give ourselves to prayer. And the Lord has told us, assured us, if we will pray, a lot will be done. And a Christian, the minister, the soldier, warrior, is to pray with understanding, possessing, in possession of great privileges and the promises revealed already in the watch of God. Uh, you know, uh, when, when the apostle told this, uh, uh, this, um, this church and the ministers and us, when he told us to pray, he had been talking about some things. From Ephesians chapter 1, and when he says, you pray with all prayer and with perseverance, watching thereunto. He has been telling us some things in chapter 1 verse 3 of Ephesians. Look at it. It tells us that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Take that to the Lord in prayer. It tells us that Christ is exalted far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. That's chapter 1 verses 21 and 22. When you go to pray, the kind of prayer you are called to is a kind of prayer that is based on knowledge. The knowledge of who you are in Christ. 
the knowledge of what you have in Christ. That the name of Christ for using in prayer is exalted far above all principalities and power. And now that you know you are wrestling against principalities and powers, and you know it's exalted far above all those principalities and powers, and that you, the spiritual warrior, you have been raised up, chapter 2, verse 6, together, and you have been made to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means you are praying from the exalted, glorified, victorious position beyond down here. Christ is exalted above the principalities and powers, and you are joined together with him, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's from that platform you are praying. And that's why you know that you are going to be answered. Therefore, the Christian warrior will pray for the assurance that God is able. This is now chapter 3, verse 20. Able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or sing, according to the power that walketh in us. And when the apostle says in chapter 6 and in verse 18, and he says, he calls you to prayer. And he says, pray it always with all prayer. And supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance, and then with supplication for all saints. He's saying, Before you pray, go to chapter one and see that you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places without understanding. Go and pray. You want to pray again? Get to chapter two and understand that you, you are raised up together with him and you are exalted. In every place is Christ Jesus. With that knowledge, go and pray. You want to pray without ceasing? Go to chapter 3. And understand that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Then go and pray. You want to pray? Go to chapter 4 and be convinced that your captain has already in chapter 4 led captivity captive. And he has given gifts unto men. And he made some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. With that understanding that the Christ, our commander-in-chief, has led captivity captive, go and pray. Do you want to pray? Please, before you do, go to chapter 5 and pray. Or the constant remembrance of the mystery that we are members of his body, of his flesh of his bone with that understanding of identification with christ that there is no difference between us and him where his hands where his mouth where his voice where his feet and we're identified with him with that understanding go and pray and by faith you know put on the whole armor of god and you are strong in the lord and in the power of his might you are confident that he can that you can stand against the wiles of the devil claim the victory accept the victory before you even go to pray on the basis of that victorious thing that you have now you can go and pray with all prayer and supplication in the spirit that, that is what the apostle was saying and that's the way he's teaching us how to pray and that's the understanding he gives us and, and that's what jesus said that uh, our praying we should just keep on praying keep on praying keep on praying and that's how you're going to have the victory and you'll not be poor spiritually and you'll not be defeated anytime spiritually in luke chapter 18 Luke chapter 18, reading from verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. In your life, if you want to, if you want to be strong, in your life, if you want to put the devil on the run, in your life, if you want to do express for the Lord, in your life, if you want the will of God to be fulfilled and done in your ministry, you ought always to pray and not to faint. Always to pray and not to faint. What does that mean? Luke chapter 11. In Luke chapter 11, reading from verse 5. Luke 11, verse 5. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? And shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to send before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in the bed, in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, knocking and knocking, asking and asking, seeking and keeping on seeking, 
And he will not give up because of his importunity, because of his perseverance. He will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, and you see, when, when he finished in, in verse 8, then he said, because of this illustration, on the strength of this illustration, on the basis of this illustration I give you now, I say unto you, ask. I keep on asking. In the Greek, in the original, the word ask is in a continuous se sentence. Ask, ask, keep on asking, it shall be given unto you. Seek, seek, keep on seeking, and you shall find. Knock, knock again, knock again, and keep on knocking, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that keeps on asking, and asking, and asking, with importunity and perseverance, everyone that keeps on asking, receiveth. And he that keeps on seeking, that's the original, and is seeking and seeking and seeking, and he findeth. And, and to him that knocketh, and knocketh, and knocketh, and keeps on knocking, it shall be opened. And that's what the Lord is telling us and encouraging us, that we ought to pray without ceasing. We ought to keep on praying. And I'm sure that you know that the early church, they had their share of persecution and problem. And yet, what helped them? Prayer. In Acts chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, reading from verse 5. Acts 12, 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And then the preacher here, their pastor, their leader, the apostle, they got into the net of Herod. And Herod had already killed James. Now he wanted to lay hands on Peter. And the people didn't think, well, you know, begin to find fault with Peter. You know, because if you begin to do that, you're not going to really pray with all your heart. But the whole church came together. And it says, as Peter was kept in the prison, prayer was made without season, without season, by the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains that is bound with this one soldier here and bound with the other soldier there and the keepers before the door kept the prison they were watching because they must bring out this apostle by the morning and finish his life and behold the angel of the lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote peter on the on the side he tapped him to wake him up and then we're told and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands and the angel said unto him guard thyself bind on thy sandals and so he did and he says unto him cast thy garments about thee and if and follow me and he went out and he followed him and he did not know he was not he knew not that it was true which was done by the angel but he thought he saw a vision when they were past the first and the second watch they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city which opened automatically to them of his own accord can you see the power of prayer herod was thinking when the morning comes i'm going to take that man i'm going to destroy the church i'm going to start by destroying their leaders i'm going to kill peter simon peter and then the angel came as a result of the prayer and then got peter up and as they were coming they didn't even have to talk or pray or say anything the other prayer they were praying in john mark's mother's house that was enough then the door iron door opened of itself automatically automatic door and then it says and he went out and he passed on through one street and forth with the angel departed from him when peter was come to himself because he thought he was dreaming he thought it was a vision he said now nah, i know of a shorty that the lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from the expectation of the people of the jews well let me before i go on with the prayer let me tell you this Peter knew that the following day, Herod was to take him and kill him. If you were, you were in the prison, in custody already. And you know Herod had determined. And you are not the first one. He's taking James and finished him. 
And now, you are the next on the line. Would you sleep that night? Will you not take out the prayer book and begin to use formula? And read everything you can read out of that prayer book. So that Herod will not catch you the following day and tell you that this man could sleep. He giveth his beloved sleep. How is it that we children of God, a little problem in the church, and the fellow even causing you the problem is not as powerful as Herod. Has no power to take the sword and cut your head. I'm telling you that Peter, that was even arrested and chained between two soldiers, those soldiers were awake and the man just slept away. And even when the angel came and woke him up, he thought he was still sleeping, that, that Peter could sleep. I wish I can sleep like Peter. And then when he now came to himself, he said, now I know. The Lord has delivered me from the expectation of Herod and the Jews. And when he had considered the sin, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, that's John Mark, whose son name was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. This was in the night. They were praying. And then, you know the rest of the story. But the point is, we should pray like that. So that by the grace of God, every problem in ministry, every problem in the church, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Point number two. Perseverance and watchfulness while praying. Brothers and sisters, here is where we need to learn from the Lord. You cannot, you will not, be more Pentecostal than Christ himself. Because the mother was filled with the Holy Ghost before he was born. The Holy Ghost will overshadow you and come upon you. And therefore the only thing that shall be born of you shall be called the Son of the Highest. He was baptized and then the heavens opened and the Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove. And then he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted while coming back we're told he was he came in the power of the spirit he appeared in the synagogue he picked up the book of Isaiah. the spirit of the lord god is upon me and then the commentary about his ministry jesus christ of nazareth anointed of the holy ghost and with power now i told you that to tell you this that you cannot be more pentecostal than jesus christ and jesus said watch and pray not just pray and you know there are many people that have been defeated in the ministry defeated in their christian lives because they pray they pray they pray but they don't watch if temptation comes only prayer they will not watch if there is anything that needs the wisdom of god to solve in the church they only pray they will not watch if there is something that is going to make destroy their ministry they only pray and speak in tongues. They will not watch. But Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, and the Bible says the Father gave him not the Spirit by measure. That is, he gave him the Spirit of God without measure. And yet he said, watch and pray. Perseverance with watchfulness while praying. And look at the way Nehemiah did it. In Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 9. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 9. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and we set a watch against them day and night because of them. I remember many years ago in a church here, that's in our church, Deeper Life, we felt that uh, the church was expanding and we felt that we had some brethren who are trained. To watch over things that's their training they're real real believers and we felt that uh, their training can be of advantage to the church and so we began to announce and we wanted you know people to serve us in the security section at that time we only had ushers because you know almost all churches have ushers and so having ushers that's not strange everybody accepted the ministry of ushers but now we announced and we said, now we're going to have some security people help us, uh, you know, look over the church and watch over our property and the people too. And when we come for our large gathering here, uh, we want these trained people to, they're Christians and they have the Spirit of God. This is their area of ministry to watch over everything around us. Uh, one of uh, a good, good brothers, beloved brother, prayerful brother, um, you know, he read the scriptures and he was, he was very prayerful. He said, 
uh, please, please, before you continue this kind of arrangement and announcement, uh, you know, the security people, uh, I, I'm afraid that, you know, the church is depending on the arm of the flesh, that we should just leave all the security people and pray, any problem, and pray. If a thief comes to carry your organ in your church, don't, don't, don't have security, just close your eyes while they are carrying your organ. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I said, brother, we are not only to pray, we are to watch. And I'm telling you, you're all your churches everywhere, watch. And you know there are people, uh, there, are, there are ministers. That they have, they have equipment in their church and they have everything. And little padlock that somebody can use a long nail and put it inside and open it and, you know, carry all the organ away. No security, nothing. Watch and pray. We will pray, but we will watch. And then as the reason, you see what Nehemiah did here. Nehemiah believed the Lord. He depended upon the Lord. And in verse 9, he said, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God. But after the prayer, we set watch. We set a watch against them. There were some people, they wanted to stop the work. They wanted to destabilize the work. We are praying to God that God will not allow it to happen. At the same time, we set a watch against them. Day and night. Not only during the day. During the night as well. And then it says, we did all that because of them. And that's the reason where to be wise. And if in your church, check up in your church. If there are people that are trained already, they are members of your church, they are in the army, or they are policemen, or they are security guards outside. They've received the training already, and they have the Spirit of God in them. Let them be useful in your church, because they have a part in the ministry. And then in Matthew chapter 26, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The minister, therefore, is both a warrior and a watchman. On the one hand, it's a prayer warrior. On the other hand, it's a watchman. He watches over his own soul. And he watches over the souls of the members of his congregation. He watches and he remains vigilant to keep the wolves from scattering the fold. He watches the lives of the Christians so as to warn them of forsaking the way of righteousness. He watches constantly and he lifts up the voice at the least sign of danger upon in the, among the people of God. While we pray, we ought to be on the alert, constantly watching. That we don't allow the flesh, we don't allow sin, we don't allow disobedience to be used by the devil to miss a victory. While we're praying, we must be watching so that we do not hinder our own prayers from being answered. Uh, look at just this uh, reference in First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered watch the relationship between you and your wife and let there be no division let there be no uh, no issue that you have not resolved and forgiven uh, don't just leave the complaining bitter wife at home and run away for crusade and nothing good will come out of that crusade make sure that you are reconciled at home watch your relationship so that your prayers will not be hindered if we pray and watch if we pray standing on the promises of God and we watch and we're vigilant on ourselves, vigilant on the people of God, there is no limit to what the Lord can do in our lives as well as in our ministry. In Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Looking at it from verse 33. Mark 13, 33. Take heed, take ye heed, watch and pray. Do you see that again? For ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore. Can you see watch? Verse 33. Watch in verse 34. Watch in verse 35. Watch ye therefore, 
and pray ye not, and, and, and for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or at midnight or at cock crowing or in the morning, lest come in suddenly and find you sleeping. Watch, I say unto you, I say unto all the watch, watch. In Luke chapter 21, Luke. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore, and pray always. Watch on the one hand, pray always on the other hand. Uh, it is very important you take note of these scriptures. Because, you know, there are people that they feel they are spiritual. When they say only watch, sorry, only pray, only pray, only pray. And if you use your common sense... If you are vigilant, if you are watching, if you are guarding, so that some things will not happen, they say, are we not in the flesh? Are we not trying to apply human ingenuity here? Why don't we just leave everything to the hands of the Lord? Are we not praying? And since we are praying, why are we bothering to watch? But you see what Jesus Christ said, watch ye therefore. But your watching is not enough, and uh, pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. In First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4, reading there in verse 7. First Peter 4, 7, but the end of all things is Satan. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. As the end of all things approaches very speedily, and iniquities abound, dangers abound, and insecurity everywhere, because we're near the very end. It's at a such a time. The leadership in the church and the church as a whole, you are sober and you are watching, watching as well as praying in Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, from verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch. You know, there are people that, I, I think they are sincere. I think they are innocent, but they are ignorant. And they come to our meeting here, and they may just be, you know, good, good, good people, God's people, ministers. And then they see that, you know, as we come in here, they see somebody bringing erroneous literature, bad books, bad doctrine. And then our security people, you know, they're very vigilant, they're sharp at alert. They seize all those things. And then the fellow begins to beg and say, well, uh, that's my livelihood. To sell false doctrine and false material and destroy the lives of people. Uh, that's, that's, my, that's my livelihood. And, and I sell this everywhere. When they're having a meeting in that other church, I said it. Nobody disturbs me. They're having a meeting there. I said it. It's only when I come to this deeper life uh, meeting that they disturb me. They seized everything. Yes, it's because the Lord said, through Paul the Apostle, that we who are overseers, that when we come together, or when we're in our churches, there will be people that will rise up, grievous wolves. They will enter in among us, not sparing the flock. And they will try to draw away people to themselves, to the erroneous doctrine. And it, it, speaking perverse things to destroy lives. And he tells us, therefore, watch. That's why we're watching. That's why we see all those things. 
and it'll be erroneous doctrine. We don't allow those things to get to our people and in your churches to anywhere you are. Watch over your congregation. How can you, my brother minister, you labor over your church for 10 years, for 15 years, and then you gather the people together, spend all your money to gather the people together, and then some erroneous uh, doctrine, something you don't believe will come into that place and turn the minds of the people, and then you don't care, you don't watch, you must watch. You pray and you watch at the same time. Verse 31, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And that's the ministry the Lord has given us. And that's the reason we're obeying the word of the Lord and we're watching. If we can only do what the Lord wants us to do, there will be no limit to the power and the possibilities of our prayer. Point number three. The power of the watchman's prayer. The power of the watchman's prayer. And we have been told as, as a Christian warriors, as ministers, that we ought to pray. Ephesians chapter 6 again in verse 18. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. If we pray the way the Lord wants us to pray and we watch the way the Lord wants us to watch, what's the power? What are the possibilities of a prayer unlimited? In John chapter 15, John chapter 15, verse 7. If ye abide in me, we will abide in him. And my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. We'll ask what we need to ask, and the Lord will answer our prayer. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And it doesn't matter where you are praying. You are locked up somewhere. You are being persecuted. You are called to the police station to come and answer a particular query, question concerning your church or your land or whatever. You can be sending prayer to God from your heart. In Acts chapter 16 verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. And once again, here, you know, when you study the Bible, learn from the Bible. I've been repeating this, I need to repeat it enough for you to always remember. See here, Paul and Silas, and they were here in the prison. And they didn't have any prayer book of them. No formula here. They just found themselves there. What were they doing? And they were changed there. And the prison doors were well locked. And the guards were there. And the other prisoners were asleep. They began to praise the Lord. Not formula. And they began to pray to the Lord. There's not a formula here. And as they were praying and praising the Lord, the prison doors and the foundations of the prison shook. And the prison doors were open. And, and the chains of everyone, everyone got loose, got free. And that's why we're saying, and we're particular about, uh, you know, uh, the people God gives me the responsibility to watch over. And I'm telling them, throw away those books. Burn those formulas. You have no value. Pray out of your heart. And pray in the spirit with all supplication and prayers. And see how God will answer in a mighty way. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Reading from verse 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effectual fervent prayer. You know, when you are, if you are, if you have noticed, uh, you know, people that preach. You will notice people that don't use, uh, they don't write every word they say, every story they are going to tell, everything with punctuation mark, and they don't write everything down. But they make some sketches because they want to still be orderly and logical. But there are some other people, they write everything down word for word. And then they just read from the first letter to the first letter, the first paragraph to the last paragraph. There's something there. It can give knowledge. That's preaching. That's all right sometimes. But it will not be fervent. 
But when somebody comes, he has the outline, he has the references, and then he just abandons himself to that message. And he reads the scripture, he gives the interpretation, and he's not bound to reading every word, every phrase, every line, and the observance of every punctuation mark. There will be fervency. I told you that to tell you this. When you read prayer from a book, formula, there's no way the fervency will come. But it says here that the effectual fervent prayer is when it's gushing out of your heart, out of the depth of your spirit. But if you open the prayer book and then you think that God will stay there for you and say, God, listen to this. What do you have to read it? God can read it himself. You can read better than God. Throw that thing away. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly, earnestly. And then you pray earnestly reading it out. That it might not rain. And he trained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And then we're told that the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. We're going to pray and the Lord will walk. I say the Lord will walk. And see the way the early church prayed in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. I'm reading there to you from verse 24. And if we are still following the pattern of the early church, here is an example, a model for us, a pattern for us. Acts chapter 4 verse 24. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice unto God with one accord. You see formula there, you see prayer book there. With one accord. And said, Lord, thou art God which made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is all that in them is who by the mouth of thy servant david has said why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the lord and against his anointed of all the truth against thy holy child jesus whom thou hast anointed who both Herod and Pontius Pilate were the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Maybe their threatenings against your church. We're going to bring everything down this morning. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by thy name or by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled all over again with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. The time has come. Everything shakeable in your church, we're going to shake. Every foundation of the enemy in your church, we're going to shake. Everything you have been trying to deal with in your church, you were not able to deal with together. All together here, united here today, we're going to deal with all those problems in your church in Jesus' name. That place you are afraid to go back and minister, we're going to pray here today. And the Lord will give you power. The Lord will give you authority. The Lord will multiply your anointing. The Lord, he will energize you. You will go back, you will shake that place. That local government, that state, that country, you will go back, you will shake that place in Jesus' name. This morning, we're going to pray. Think about your church. Think about yourself. Think about your family. Think about people having problems in your your church. Those who are sick and those who are oppressed and those who are one thing or the other. All those problems, we're going to deal with them right now. They will be free. 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 Talk to the Lord in prayer. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. And talk to the Lord in prayer. Let the foundations of hell shake at the sound of the mighty prayer of the people of God. No more defeat in your life. No more defeat in your ministry. All that the devil has been doing to cheat you, defeat you. 
destroy your ministry, ruin your ministry. We're going to deal with them today. Watch and pray. Pray and watch. Watch, watch, watch. Watch over the property in your church. Don't be careless. You spent so much money to buy that equipment. You spent some money to get the girls, the people to watch. So that you don't just waste so much money on equipment and property and you are not getting people to stand and watch over them. Watch over the membership of your church. Don't allow them to just cut her here and there and eat poison and take in error. Watch over them. Watch and pray. Watch over your own life. Watch and pray. Don't, the devil, don't let the devil cheat you. The Lord has deposited a lot in your life. A lot in your life. He has invested a lot in you. Don't sell yourself so cheap to the devil. Watch and pray. Your own children precious precious gift from god pray for them pray for them watch over them too watch and pray your ministry must be very close to your heart you don't just allow anybody coming from another church to come and take over your church making them leaders and you spent so much and you've invested so much and you don't know them very much and you just hand over your ministry to them watch and pray Your victory is sure. Your victory is sure. Your victory is sure. Satan cannot defeat you. Or the whole armor on, you will not be defeated. You will not be defeated. You will not be defeated. Put on the whole armor. Praying with all prayer and supplication for the saints. With all perseverance in your prayer. You're on the victory side. You're on the victory side. You will not fail. Almighty God who has called you will not allow you to fail. Your victory is a joy of the Lord. Your success is a joy of the Lord. You will not fail. Any problem in your church that is threatening the life of your church, the Lord will solve them for you he loves you he has called you he has appointed you you will not fail in jesus name we pray amen
In Jesus' name we pray. Now, you raise up your hand on behalf of your church, your local assembly. While you are raising up your hand, remember that member that has been sick for a long time. Remember that person in your church under attack, under oppression. Remember that person in your church whose family is being devastated. Remember, members in your church, they are going through one thing or the other. And they are even getting discouraged now. They don't know whether they will keep on coming to church again. Or whether they will leave your church and go to another church. Remember all the things that your church, your local church, that they are facing. As you are raising up your hand now, you are raising up your hand on their behalf. And when you get back home, you encourage them. You assure them that the warfare in that area is over. That the Lord will comfort his people. And that victory will come for your people. And that this church, your church, your local church, will progress. It will grow. All the termites and all the agents of Satan trying to destroy that local church where you come from. The Lord will deal with them today in Jesus' name. Keep up your hand for them, member for members of your church. Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are, every minister here, representing tens, hundreds, thousands of people. You know, the, the people they represent, we're asking, oh Lord, every one of those members, that the agents of Satan, messengers of death, are visiting. And they're giving them affliction, incurable disease. Lord, we stand in unity of faith. On behalf of those members back at home, defeat the devil on their behalf in Jesus' name. Every one of those members having incurable disease, every one of those members weighed down with bodies, pressure, emotional pressure, depression that some of them even want to think of leaving the church going to another church or even leaving the church entirely leaving christianity and just going back into the world oh lord we pray break the yoke in jesus name i pray lord that there will be victory in every church success for every church and all the termites, all the little, little foxes, and all the agents of Satan, and all the evil things working against any church represented by any of these ministers here, deal with them, cast them out, destroy them in Jesus' name. Let there be healing in their churches, deliverance in their churches. I pray, Lord, that will set all the captives free in those churches in Jesus' name. Lord, I know that here in Nigeria and Africa, a great, great body, when there's a family in the church and they don't have children. And those families may want to leave that church and just go anywhere they can find solution to their problems. I pray, Lord, as these, my fellow ministers, are raising up their hands. On behalf of those barren families back at home, I pray, Lord, because of Jesus, because of your promises that will never fail, and because of your glory, and because, Lord, you are a faithful God. Touch those families. Give them children in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord, I pray for churches here that uh, they don't want to serve you. They want to preach your word. But they want to have crusade. There is no money. They need gospel vans. There's no money. They need equipment. There's no money. Uh, they don't want to beg. They, they, they know that we children of God, ministers of God, you've given them something so precious, but it's like they have been driven to the wall. And they say, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Lord, I pray for every such minister here this day, that you open the windows of heaven. You have all the resources they need, all the finance they need, where, Lord, poverty lack of money lack of funds has been stopping the work of god by any of the ministers here open the windows of heaven provide for them in jesus name <laughs> lord i pray for ministers here who maybe they are not married yet and the temptation is strong they have successful ministries and this lady will come and say the pastor is the will of god another will come the pastor is the will of god 
And some of those ladies are so desperate. They may even want to pull the pastor, uh, their, their leader, into, you know, into agreement with them to do whatever so they can marry them. Lord, I pray, whatever has been a stumbling block, hindering these pastors from getting married to your perfect will, all those chains and shackles, all those curses and yokes, I break them in Jesus' name. That these leaders, these ministers, pastors, they will marry in the will of God in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm the miracle. And I pray, Lord, as we begin to write to one another, share the testimonies with one another, that there will be a lot of testimonies of ministers who are here this morning that will say, praise the Lord, the Lord has done it. And you give us chance to celebrate and rejoice with one another. I pray for pastors here who are giving their lives, giving everything. They are praying for others. They are having children. They are praying for others. They are having prosperity. Praying for others, having a lot of things. But they themselves, they themselves, they do not have enough. Lord, as they are feeding other people, you will feed them. As they are providing for other people, you will provide for them. Any minister here that, you know, the doctors have said he cannot uh, have a child because something is lacking in his body or something in the body of the wife, Lord, in unity of faith, will cancel it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that they will have their own children in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for any minister here having any case in the court. Having any case with, you know, people here, and it's like it should run out of town. The conflict is too much. As he's finishing this, they are calling him, come, come and answer, Kuri. come and answer this one. Lord, set your people free. With all this burden of case, case, court, and all that in their mind, how can they concentrate? Therefore, Lord, I pray that this very year, all these cases waiting in the court, and these, they don't have long legs, they don't know anybody, but they know you. And they know your word. And they know Jesus Christ, our advocate. Oh Lord, cancel the case for them in Jesus' name. And if people of might and power in the world are trying to cheat them, stand by their side. Defend these people. These are your ambassadors and ministers. Defend them in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, these ministers, as they are going back tomorrow, we don't want weak ministers, sickly ministers, ministers that accidents are happening every year in their families. No, it will not be so again. We take authority over every negative thing in the life of every minister, in the family of every minister, and all those demonic forces that want to kill, that want to destroy, that want to do evil in the life, in the ministry, in the family of any minister here, we cancel it in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that after this conference, ministers who are here together, from different churches, different denominations. We forget our denominations. Anything of joy, we write to one another. We need one another's help. We need one another's hands. We write to one another. So that, Lord, in unity of faith, we will take this country and this continent for you in Jesus' name. And Lord, whenever any of us gets into any problem, we can easily write to fellow ministers. And our churches and fellowship of ministers can take it up and we can win the victory for our fellow minister. I pray, Lord, the victory, the healing, the deliverance, the prosperity, the, your goodness that you are giving to all these ministers and their families and churches in this place will be permanent in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we believe, we pray. Amen. Do you believe? Do you believe? I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord. <laughs>